wave function collapse. It's a fancy name for an algorithm that is actually quite simple and today I want to show you how I'm using it to generate these little castles here. So before we get into it, let's simplify it a little bit and have a look at a 2D example. So let's say we have a 3x3 grid and inside each tile of the grid we can place these little modules. The goal of the algorithm is to fill the grid with some of these modules in such a way that they all connect. Right now, since the grid is empty, the tiles could have all seven possible modules go in them, so the algorithm starts by just picking a random tile and collapsing it to a random module. Once that has been collapsed, it'll then check the tiles which neighbour the collapsed one and prune away any modules which are no longer possible. The effects of this are then propagated to the neighbours, neighbours and so on and so forth until there's nothing left to prune. Finally, the algorithm will pick a tile with the least possible modules and collapse it. This repeats until the entire grid has collapsed. So far this is pretty simple, but there is a question left unanswered still. How does the algorithm know which tiles are allowed to connect to each other and which aren't? Well for this 2D example it's not too complex. We can easily mark up each tile with a socket ID, so if the edge is grass we'll mark it with a 0, and if the edge has a road we'll mark it with a 1. Now when it comes time to check which tiles are able to connect to each other, we can just check if the connecting edges sockets are the same. And if so, the tile is able to connect and we can keep it around. If not, we can prune it. Okay, let's bring it back to the third dimension. Here is my set of modules that I'll use to build the castles. We now know that all we have to do is mark the extents with a socket ID. Doing this manually for all the tiles and their rotations would be a pain in the bum, so I figured out a script to do it for me which also turned out to be a pain in the bum. Let me show you how I went about it. So here we have our 3D grid. And let's focus in on one of the tiles of our grid. Let's also say that this tile has already collapsed to this module. All we really need to care about is what's going on at the borders of these tiles. So if we want to figure out what can connect with this module on this face here, the script will analyze the vertices on the border of the tile and map out their positions. We can then associate these positions with a socket ID so that if we come across another face with the same vertex positions, we know that it should be marked with the same socket and the two modules would be able to connect. However, we can't just simply use numbers for the sockets like we did in the 2D example. For symmetrical sockets, we want to mark them with an S at the end to let the algorithm know, since all symmetrical sockets can connect to each other. For asymmetrical ones though, we want to store a flipped version of it too and mark that with an F as asymmetrical sockets can only connect with mirrored versions of themselves. For sockets with no vertex sets, we mark them with a negative one to indicate that they can only connect with air. And finally, for sockets on the top and the bottom of the tile, we mark them with a V to indicate they are vertical sockets, and a number at the end to let the algorithm know how many 90 degree rotations this socket needs to connect with whatever is above or below it. All this data gets stored in a little dictionary which looks like this. The name indicates which mesh we should use and how many 90 degree rotations it should have. And these letters indicate which socket is in which direction. So here you can see we have socket 0s in the positive x direction. Now that we have this data, we just need to plug it into our algorithm and we are essentially complete. The algorithm is surprisingly simple and most of the complexity actually comes from figuring out what is allowed to connect to each other and automating that process. Before I go, I've left some links to videos that I've watched to learn about how to implement this algorithm, so please check those out. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you enjoy watching these little castles generate.